this time of year is always a gamble chocolate. You open it up, I think you're getting caramel, you get some nasty fruit filled crap. So today we're uh, right below Kite Lake, so we're going to be hiking the Decalibron for a full hike review of the Decalibron. So Mount Democrat, Cameron, Lincoln, and Bross, four of them, 14ers. Uh, check the link below. Just got to the trailhead. It's a Saturday, early November. Uh, the snow doesn't look too bad. I'll show you that in a bit. Uh, but I want to talk about the road here. It's closed now, so we'll be adding uh, additional couple miles of hiking, basically. So this is the road that in summer months, as you can see, it's dirt. It's not too bad until you get about a half mile, quarter mile maybe from the trailhead, uh, which I'll show you in a bit, but then it turns kind of rough. So really most cars can make it up most of the way. Uh, once you get past the gate, which is closed, which is why we're, and by we, I mean me, parked down low, you do have to pay a fee of $3 in cash. I would recommend getting an envelope when you first see this fee station. That way you can just put your money in and drop it off on the way up to the hike instead of going up to the trailhead and walking back down to wherever you end up parking. Up here at the uh, upper trailhead. And um, yeah, snow level's not too bad. So let's uh, bring it to speed here. We have Democrat. That's a false summit. The true one's just over the hump there. Cameron. Lincoln is through there. And then Bross. It's actually like right over that hump. So the standard approach here is just gonna work your way in and then up to the saddle. Take a left. <laughs> Pretty annoying snow, as you can tell by that last shot me it's uh i don't know maybe a couple inches three inches deep it's like a little crusty on top but completely sugar snow underneath so it's not well traveled you get like these kind of like drunken footsteps and it's uh yeah really slow going so definitely hoping that once we get up higher the wind has blown the snow a bit more because this is just Suck city right now. Framing uh, the frozen Kite Lake underneath the slope, southern slopes of Mount Democrat. So this is Mount, uh, sorry, Kite Lake is a popular spot to camp. Some people even just come up to see it. I'm jaded, I know that. I've seen so many beautiful parts of the state that like Kite Lake really doesn't do it for me. But I don't think it's worth it to just come up to see Kite Lake. There's so many more, much, much prettier uh, alpine lakes in Colorado that Kite Lake's like a puddle. If you're watching this video and you're new to 14ers, visiting Colorado and considering the Decalibron as a hike, uh, just be aware that it's not easy because uh, yeah, you just, Gain elevation like crazy on this one. It's just a straight shot up the whole time. So uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit that bell, so you don't miss out on any future 14er or hike videos. I will admit that any hike in the snow is gonna be more difficult. So that's probably a little bit of the factor here, but yeah, it's just straight up. Um, I talk about it in my ranking the 14ers video since I have hiked all 58 um, where the Decalibron sits so I'll include that somewhere in the description below so if you want to check that out uh, there are no easy 14ers in my opinion just easier ones relatively compared to the other ones For those of you looking for a good 14er to try out for a winter hike, uh, Mount Democrat and Mount Bross are both not bad options. Although you do add some additional hiking because of the road closure, it's pretty accessible. And for the most part, there really is not a lot of 
uh, high risk avalanche terrain on either one of them. So uh, obviously do your research, I'm not saying just go do it, but if you're looking for one, these are uh, a good option. And if you do want to do the whole Decalibron, obviously once on your ri you're on the ridge, you can knock out the other two pretty easily. Up in the uh, upper basin here, the trail will just kind of like switch back its way to the ridge point there and then take the ridge up to the false summit. Democrat, it's actually my first 14er, the Decalibron, my next three, obviously. And uh, when we first hiked this, Jackie came with me and she was all gone ho on doing all four and we got to the top of Democrat and she was just like, yep, I'm done. So I went back to the car and took a nap and I basically just like jogged the other three because I felt pretty good and was just looking to kind of not make her wait super long. Needless to say, it's been a while since I've done Democrat, and since then, I did 54 14ers. Jackie's done one other one, Mount Yale. Okay, yeah, all right. Nearing the top of the saddle, just giving you a, a quick back so parking area right around there upper trailhead right around there we bit windy we're going next as is often the case with uh, notches or saddles of mountains as a wind tunnel so don't be discouraged if it's super windy when you get to that point i have this love hate relationship with eating for a hike because on the one hand it obviously gives you way more energy and the other hand I always have to go to the bathroom and so it's like do I want to feel good or feel bad and really I end up feeling bad either way so jokes on me uh, that's the way up to Cameron and that is actually Cameron uh, so the reason why Cameron is not a true 14er is because in order for a mountain to be a 14er, there has to be 300 feet of vertical gain and loss between here and Democrat behind us. That saddle back there is just over 13,000 feet. So as I always say, it's almost just fell down there. Uh, it's a good spot to turn around if you're not feeling great. Still have another thousand feet of climbing to go. corner get the false summit true summit's just shortly past that and man i love the snow covered mountain views they're my favorite Summit of Mount Democrat, so one of the four DeCalibron Mountains down. It's uh, really windy up here, so the audio is not great. From car to here, 2.63 miles, and I still have uh, three more 14 to go. So I'm gonna take a little break here, and then uh, on my way to Mount Cameron, which is up next. I am totally nerding out right now, but look how cool these footprints are. These are obviously like a couple of days old, and the wind has blown off the soft top layer of snow, but it's kept the imprint there. Just pretty cool stuff. At least for me, you guys probably think this is lame, man. I know it's gonna be super windy back down on the saddle, uh, but basically to catch you up where we are, uh, 
just retrace the steps from Democrat back down to the initial saddle here. And then the trail for Cameron is going to go right up there. There are supposed to be 10 mile per hour winds today. What a joke. Unlike Mount Democrat, Cameron doesn't play any games. The trail is just legitimately straight up the saddle with very minimal switchbacks. So again, just constant popping up the legs. Funny how fast I came down Democrat and how slow I'm going up Mount Cameron right now. It's really pathetic. I gotta be honest with you, I totally forgot that uh, Mount Cameron has, what do you want to call it? One, two, this one could be three false summits. True summit is right about there. Obviously, it was super windy up there, so I couldn't record anything uh, that you'd be uh, that would be audible. But uh, that's the summit, just right up there. Now that you've left Mount Cameron, it'll be very, very obvious. It looks like a road almost up to Mount Lincoln. Mount Lincoln is the second hump right here. It's the most technical of the four, and it's really not technical. It's like class two at the highest. So don't get too intimidated. But um, yeah, it's pretty uh, unique up here. It's like a big flat gravel field at 13,000 plus feet. Summit of Mount Lincoln, second time up here. This side of the ridge is windless, which is so awesome because I've been walking in the wind for like three hours now and it's starting to really, really annoy me and like beat me down mentally. So nice change of pace for a little bit. Uh, very warm up here. This over here is Mount Bross. You can see, maybe make them out. There's a ton of like jeeping roads up here. You can actually drive pretty close to the summit of Mount Bross. Uh, this right here is a Centennial. I don't know the name of it offhand. Once you once you get over Mount Cameron, a lot of your climbing is done for the day. You do have a little climb to get up to Lincoln and a little climb to get over to Bross. Uh, but really, the big climbs of the Decalibron are getting up to Democrat and then getting up to Cameron. Uh, once you hit those two, the other two are definitely easier. Quandry Peak. Giving you some views. Always pretty with snow views. And next up, Mount Bross. Now that you're headed over to Bross, you cannot really make it out, but you can see it much better in person. You don't want to miss this right here. So the trail you came down from from Cameron is going out like that, but you want to kind of cut over to the left here. So this is an important trail junction when you're coming down from Lincoln. While we have minimal winds here, let's talk about Mount Bross for a second. So as you've probably read if you're hiking the Decalibron, Mount Bross is on private land. Theoretically, if you go to the summit of Mount Bross, you are trespassing. Now obviously hundreds of people go to the summit of Mount Bross every year, and it's a more complicated issue than you're trespassing because the land is split up around Mount Bross and owned by so many different people that it's, uh, it really is kind of a clusterfuck, honestly. Uh, personally, I'm of the mindset of if you summit Mount Bross, make it quick, don't hang out with 
linger, and of course follow no trace like you always would. Treat it like you're walking through someone's yard and just make it quick. Uh, I know there's some people that don't want to do that. There is a bypass trail to not summit Mount Bross, and I'll show you that in a little bit here. This is where the private property line starts, so they tell you to stay on the trail. So I'm just going to give a quick rundown while there's no wind. Basically the bypass trail will take you like right there and then down again. And the summit is right there. It's a very murky issue and ultimately I can't tell you what to do. It's your preference. Is it important for you to get on the summit of Mount Bross? All right, cool. Go get it. If it's not, you don't feel comfortable uh, trespassing, then don't do it. There's nothing forcing you to. This is the point where you make your decision. Left here goes up to Mount Bross. Right is the bypass trail. I've been thinking about this for like the last 20 minutes. What do I do? What do I do? I think for obvious reasons, and you can read between the lines on this, I'm not going to summit Mount Bross today. I've already been up there twice. I really don't feel the need to show you it. It's very straightforward from here. I will say, uh, there's not a lot doing up there, so you're really not missing much. It's a pretty ugly summit. From the other side, the sign will tell you the trail goes this way. You can obviously see that trail that goes up to the summit. So that is what you're shooting for. Again, what I showed you on the other side is the straightest way to get up from that side. If you're coming from, if you're gonna do Mount Ross first in the Decalibron, that's the way you go. Some of you may have heard my other videos talking about Ross with poor trail conditions. This is uh, Exhibit A is what I'm talking about. It doesn't look bad from here, but when you're on it, you realize quickly that it's just a lot of this, a lot of loose rock. And uh, it's pretty steep too. So I find it really ironic that you pay $3 to park up here, which obviously the people who own this land are collecting. And then you can't even get good trail conditions. I mean, oh, and, and it's illegal to summit across technically. It is kind of a joke to me. So that's one of the reasons I really don't hike the Decalibron. It's only my second time doing it. And it's just really coming down from Bross that is awful. Pretty important junction here. I would not recommend going this way unless there's full blown snow. Take a left here and go down. Down that god awful garbage onto this garbage. A little bit more defined, at least gotten down from the steepest part so it's only slightly terrible here still not great this trail is just a disaster man it just sucks it's like wild because for how popular it is you'd think that it'd be one of the uh, first trails to be to get trail maintenance right but the problem is because it's privately owned because there's private land in here Groups like Colorado 14ers Initiative can't come in and do trail work. They're, the trail work is supposed to be done by the people who own the trail. One last look at the Decalibron before we get too low here. Okay, use your imagination here. Picture a nice little waterfall in the summer. Isn't that nice? Okay, thank God. <laughs> Finally back down to the upper trailhead here. And what a beautiful backdrop. That was the positive of that really crappy trail is having these nice views to look at to keep you mentally chugging. Okay, so I have another mile to the car. So with the extra mileage, it'll just be short of nine miles. As I said earlier, the Decalibron, specifically Democrat, maybe Cameron, are good first winter hikes. So if you're looking to get into that, do your research, make sure it's safe, but it's a nice option. Uh, the Decalibron is dog friendly. This is a very popular hike. We saw dogs off the leash today, and this time of year, I don't think it's a big deal. But during the summer, definitely have them on the leash because it's just common courtesy, really. Um, I hiked this whole uh, four fourteeners today with nothing but my hiking boots. So if you're coming soon, micro spikes are probably good. I just sometimes don't really feel like I need them, and so I just went boots only today. Yeah, the Decalibron. So. Democrat, Cameron, Lincoln, 
Ross. Uh, it's a good, it's a good uh, 14 or group to start off on. If you're gonna do all four in one day, just it's gonna be a long day. So I'm gonna wrap up this video on the Decalibron, the four 14ers here, and for a full hike review, go ahead and check that link below. If you found this video helpful, give it a like, hit that subscribe button, not to miss any future hike videos, and we'll see you on the next adventure. Thanks for watching.